Presented by EA Sports in association with the PGA Tour. Frank, great golf course and great man behind it. Oh, it certainly is. Anytime you get a chance to uh, play the King's Golf Course in Arnold Palmer, uh, that is a pleasure. Hosted the Arnold Palmer Invitational for so many years now and always produces a worthy champion. Arnold Palmer bought it in the 1970s through the years, Frank. It wasn't unusual to see Arnold roaming the grounds, hitting golf balls, playing in that regular game. They call it the shootout. He's still pretty competitive. No, oh, he is, that's for sure. Yeah, he'll sneak out there, do a little bit of practice beforehand. He does not like to hand over his $20 note. It's a tough golf course, Frank, with a really exciting finishing stretch. There's enough water there to uh, tempt the faintest of hearts, that's for sure, and also steal a dozen or so golf balls. And it's been the scene of some really incredible moments. I think back to Robert Gomez as a rookie holding out with a seven iron on the final hole to beat Greg Norman. Yeah, Matt Every won in 2014. Of course, Tiger Woods has literally owned this golf course, winning eight times. And uh, of course, the last of which was in 2013. Interesting, with the almost space-age advancements in golf equipment, what with new, lighter materials, and with the increased focus on fitness and strength, players are hitting the ball longer than ever. That has forced architects to lengthen the golf courses without sacrificing the integrity or the shot value of the original design. That's off the beaten track. That's got five minutes to find it. You'll need to get all of this one. 200 yards, the second shot. Frank did the prudent thing there, didn't he? Yeah. In the end, really, you could have turned that into a disaster instead. Actually, a good chance, really, to uh, perhaps get away with par. One of the game's talented young players, Patrick Rogers, ready for his approach. In the direction of the sand. And looks like it. Somehow that managed to miss the bunker, Frank. Yeah, that looked like it was sand for sure. Now the third shot for Snedeker. You don't want to let this one get away. This is about concentration and focus at this point. This one looks good. Might like it. Oh, they're going to love it. What a putt. Patrick Rogers' putt for birdie. That was well judged, wasn't it? Back to the action here at the Bay Hill Club and Lodge. Second hole, it is a pretty demanding par three, Frank. Goal really is to just carry that front bunk up or sneak it a little right of that and try and cheat it around. Now, this is not hitting in the right direction. You know, it looks like it's gonna be in the rough. Paying attention like a little kid at school, Frank. That baby's sitting up. Sitting up? It's got the best view as well. You don't even need binoculars from where that ball is. So on the putting surface and taking a good look now at this birdie putt here at the second. Needs a pair of binoculars to see the hole. Yeah, that's a good putt right there. From that distance, he'll settle.
really. This is that awkward length. Almost. Wow. That's costly right there. Painful. Makeable putt right here. He is currently sitting at one under for the round. Right off the edge. Wow. That hurts. Just a little tap in here. Did the job right there. This for double bogey. Plus one in the early going. Frank, now to the third hole here at Bay Hill. If you have a case of the snap hooks, <laughs> you're in some serious trouble here. You're going to run out of golf balls here as well, but a uh, good tee shot's going to leave you something like 150, 160 yards into a very narrow green. Just a good solid tee shot right there, about 280 yards. In the fairway, it's lying nicely, and 180 yards left. Uh, this looks like it's going to find the target. So a chance for birdie after another solid approach shot. Second shot here at the third. One of the narrowest greens at Bay Hill, uh, water, as you can see on that left side. So for the faint of heart, you're going to miss, if anything, to that right side. And that's exactly where they put a little bunker. So he went for the brief swim there, Frank. He's trying to stay dry now. He is. Uh, just trying to avoid water on the brain as well. <laughs> this will take a good swing. So this is his fourth shot after the last one found the water. It's not all over, but uh, right now, too, he's staring uh, down the barrel of a, a very bad hole. Oh, hello there. Really nice putt. So he has that for bogey. I can't help but think that the double bogey at one and now another at number two has really taken him out of his game at this point. I'm loving that balance. Frank, it makes the game easy when you play it from the fairway. Especially when you play it from a lie like that. And from the fairway for his second shot here. And 
Kennedy steps up to take this shot from the fairway. He tied Tiger Stanford record with 11 collegiate tournament victories. How about that? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty lofty company in that. Uh, great build for golf. Um, you know, a swing that matches. It'll be interesting as the game develops over the next five to ten years uh, when we see Patrick become one of the best game, best players in the game today. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. Standing over this putt, concentrating on the read. That was a good run right there. Almost went in. Yeah, at least he's seen the line as it went past the hole. So just replicate that on the way back. Always get the sense that he could make. He is one of the game's premier putters. Snedeker for birdie. <laughs> Drops the putt to go to two under. So a tester from four feet. Sitting right now at two over par for the round. Needs birdies at some point, but will take the par to stay at two over. Frank, now to the fifth. What's the strategy here at this shorter par four? Well, if you want to flex your muscles, Rich, take it over that left, left bunker. With a little trailing breeze, you might even get close to the green. Great way to start a hole nicely placed in the fairway. Headed for the bunker? That one is in the bunker. And the tee shot ends up in the bunker. Frank, what about this approach shot here at the fifth? One of the few holes where you get a short iron in your hand for that second shot, but that green slopes away at about a 45 degree angle to the right, which makes distance control paramount here at five. That is classy. Well, yeah, chance of going in. Digs in, ready for the bunker shot. Yeah, second shot here. Just try and aim a little bit behind that ball, an inch or two. In the direction of the sand. It looks like it. Oh, a bit unfortunate. Wasn't able to avoid the sand trap. Great professionals, Frank. They don't fear the green side bunker shot, do they? No, because you can be as aggressive or as conservative as you want. You actually have far more options. And you don't have to hit the ball first. Shouldn't be a problem here, but not a formality either. They'll take it. That's a par. Getting set now over the putt. Minus three now for the round. Frank, back in 1998, by any chance, do you remember exactly how many golf balls John Daly hit into the water at the sixth? It was half a dozen. Uh, half a box of golf balls. Excellent looking shot here. This is hitting in the wrong direction. Uh-oh. 
Frank, they threw him a life vest. He's back on dry land. And I hope this time he swings, he doesn't have the water wings on. Third shot now, after the last one found the deep blue. Yeah, you can still minimize the damage here. It's only one bad shot that you got punished for. This has to go in the hazard. It needs to get up or it's so toweled off, dried off, and ready to go. Yeah, let's hope uh, this swing he hasn't still got the floaties on. Has to regroup, playing his fifth shot after hitting it in the water. Yeah, it's not all lost. Once again, check the yardage, check the wind, start again. Good recovery shot. Couldn't make the green, but at least he's back in flight. Played the smart shot right there. Good news is, was able to retrieve the golf ball. Uh, yeah, on dry land, and uh, can he carry it this time, though? So, he's playing his eighth shot. Frank, how do you keep it together? Um, it, it's, it, it's hard to imagine. He's just completely lost his mind at the moment. That one ends up in the rough. Oh, that, that went sideways. Just in the first cut of rough, not a bad lie. The only issue is he might get a jumper here. Just a bit offline and into the bunker. Ball sitting down here in the rough. He's digging in. Superb shot. Uh, that's, uh, that's as good as it's going to get. There's going to be no worries about making that one. All right, so greenside bunker. What's he looking to do with this shot, Frank? Well, really, you have to look at the amount of green you got to play with. You don't have to try and fly the ball right by the flag. Allow it to run. Plus, if you can get it to run like a putt, you never know. It might just go in. Well, once you hit double the par, it's time to just pick up and move on. Settles in over the putt. Putting a good round together now at four under. Moving on now, Frank, we're at the par three seventh hole. What's the challenge here? Really, the high ball hitters have an advantage here. Just try and carry it in the middle of the green. He's knocked it on the green, but not in a great position. This is a difficult chance coming up here. Long birdie try. Another good swing, and it looks like, Frank, another really good shot. Needs a pair of binoculars to see the hole. So close. That's a nice lag putt. Frank, what would you focus on on a long putt? That three-foot circle. Um, obviously, you allow yourself a little bit more the further and further away you get, but um, just expectations. Lower them a little bit. There's certain distances. Just take two. And that wasn't a gimme, but it sure made it look easy. Trying to grind out a par here. Needs it. Just a little tap in here. Frank, we hear the sports psychologists often say, put the mistake behind you, live in the moment. Easier said than done. It is, male, female, it, it doesn't, uh, 
it, it certainly it affects everybody that plays this game. And somehow you've got to you know, play, you've heard the old cliche, one, one shot at a time. But this is why it's so important. Because if anything from the past creeps in, it really does affect on what you do after that. They'll be happy with that in the fairway. Now a good chance to attack this hole. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. The bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. Well, you can't hide the flag stick from that man. He is just uh, unbelievable. That, that never deviated offline. Second from an excellent lie. Uh-oh, this one's going left, Frank. Pretty good result right there, considering it looked rough all the way. Exactly. It really did. Patrick now eyeing a par. Well, that was a good looking putt, just not falling right now. Well, sadly, he's going to be disappointed. This one just requires a little bit of focus. To like that four under so a tester from four feet this golf course has been demanding today and the scores reflect that seven over par final hole now of the front side it's a 474 yard par four and frank you've played it before what works best here well, ideally a nice little draw off the tee, but the hole's quite weird because the, the tee shot shapes to the left and yet the green goes the other way. This is not heading in the right direction. No, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. We moved that one out there, but he is not going to like the lie. Uh, that moved down in the rough. Good lie in the fairway. Had a good chance to make something happen here. This has been a great performance so far, but Frank, a long ways to go. Do you ever worry about complacency? Yeah, sometimes it just looks like it's too easy. At the moment, the putts are going in, the iron shots are going close enough. But uh, some things, you know, they don't happen by, by accident. He's got to still keep concentrating right now. Not what he wanted, but he's headed to the beach. Well, bunker play is really about technique and feel. The two greatest ever are probably Gary Player and Seve Ballesteros. Seve actually was so good, he was so skilled, that he could open up a three iron, that's right, a three iron, on a short bunker shot from a green side bunker and splash it to a couple of feet as if he had just used a 60 degree sandwich, amazing.
Rogers trying to play mistake-free golf needs this for his par. And that's in for a par. Could use this one. This is for par. He's made it. Just a perfect springtime day here in Orlando, Florida. We're at the Bay Hill Club and Lodge. Frank, how do you get off to the perfect start on the second nine here? One of the few holes here that actually uh, moves to the right. So a little cut off those two bunkers. Either that or if you can fly the ball 280, 285, you can take it over the right. Oh, just an iron. Looks to be a good setup going into the green here at the 10th. That one is bunker bound, it looks like. Well, too bad. He'll have to play from the bunker. And the tee shot ends up in the bunker. Frank, the approach shot here to the par 4 tenth. Decent chance for a birdie with a good shot? It is really all about distance control. There's four different sections here at 10, but if you've got the right club in your hand, then you are looking directly at the flag. Not enough on that one. Yeah, it just seemed to baby it. Well, the tension is almost unbearable with 115 yards left to the hole. Frank just never really adjusted to these changing winds. They have been, uh, have been a problem for everybody out there, but, uh, but once again, you know, smart shot selection. You don't have to aim every shot at the flag today. And an awkward little bunker shot, just splash it out, let the ball run towards the flag. No putter, no problem. Slams that into the cup. This is a 19-foot putt. Did the job right there. Another par four here, the 11th. It's just under 440 yards. This time, there's water looming left and then bunkers on the right-hand side. It's a pretty good challenge, Frank. This hole is very similar to the third hole uh, on the front side. Two bunkers down the right side. Just got to keep the, keep it a little left. You don't have to hit driver here. Well, he'd like to have that one back in the bunker. Still a chance to get it up and down. Frank, this one's not looking good. Yeah, it's certainly not down the fairway line, hitting toward the rough. Wayward from the tee, and this one is headed for the rough, Frank. Frank, just a slight miss off the tee. He's in the fairway bunker. Yeah, I just really got to pick the right club once again. Sometimes you take a little bit more club out of the fairway bunker, choke down. And second shot. <laughs> On the green, and a chance for birdie. Second shot coming out of the rough here. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. Sometimes you get breaks, and he got one right there. Yeah, I guess uh, the bunker was a little smaller than I thought it was. It looked doomed for that. Boy, this could be a tough one right here, Frank. It's a very long putt, Rich. Obviously, it's difficult, uh, but he still has a shot to sink this one for birdie. On the way. This one has a chance, and he has it. Beautiful putt. Getting set now over the putt. Yeah. 
nudge this one home, finish it up. Good solid par right there. Seeing it up here on the 12th, 574-yard par 5, Frank. Another one that's reachable, obviously long and straight. That rough down the right side, though, is normally very thick. Uh, avoid the two bunkers, lots of contours and undulations around this green. Game's about rhythm. It, when you have good rhythm, it just looks effort effortless. To hit the ball 300 yards through the air, that easy. Just a good solid tee shot right there, about 280 yards. That ball nestled down just a bit in that heavy rough. Set for his next shot from a good position in the fairway. This is just a superb performance. Great round to this point, Frank, and you can really see that reflected in his mood today. Yeah, it just looks too easy. Uh, swinging the club beautifully. The ball's going exactly where he, where he wants it to. He's not trying to take too many risks. So consequently, he's getting birdie opportunity after birdie opportunity. He'll need to be strong with this. And in the direction of the sand. It looks like it. Just a bit offline and into the bunker. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Early part of this second nine, a good approach shot. And now, pretty good chance for birdie. Great knees, great hands in this shot. Yeah, touch. You, you, you have to have that feel. You have something between the ball and the club face. So it's a different feel, but you also have to have imagination. Brant Snedeker for birdie. Oh, he's going to love it. How far was that? That was miles away. Locked in on the read and the speed. Well, thank you at last. A birdie. That was a long time coming, Frank. Yeah, finally he strung some shots together. Now, if all of a sudden he can do the same on the next hole, he might just get a run going. Not quite what he was hoping for, the tee shot in the bunker. Great strike and a great result. Setting up, good chance to attack the flag. This is one of the more challenging shots in the game, the fairway bunker shot, isn't it, Frank? It, it is. You look at the distance involved, you know, obviously what's in front of him now. He has to hit this shot absolutely clean. I love it with a nice splash out of the bunker. It lands softly and just runs out right next to the hole. Beautiful shot. Par 4, 13. Frank, how do you hit this approach shot? Rich, it's the first par four at Bay Hill where the water is actually on the right of the green, um, and that has to be taken into consideration. Just a little errant shot, and then you're going to be wet. So a little left of the flag, that's where you want to be. Really? This is an awkward length. A 
There you have it. Well done. Great pass. Rich, I remember playing with, um, it was Ben Crenshaw and Mark McCumber in a World Cup of Golf at Royal Melbourne. And Royal Melbourne's greens are as fast as any in the world. And it was probably one of the best putting exhibitions I ever saw without Ben actually making every putt. His sense of speed. Um, and I think that's, that's where I started to see that putting was a real art. He would look at a putt like it had seven or eight different dimensions to it. But it was all feel. It wasn't mechanical. It wasn't like this sort of amazing thought process. It, w it, was, it was sort of uh, through osmosis, he would just feel a green. So he'd, it would go up and down several humps and hollows and that, and invariably just, if it missed, it just settled on the back of the cup. And these were the fastest greens in the world. Incredible display. His longtime caddy at Augusta National, Carl Jackson, and they came together in the mid 1970s. Carl recalls the first time he saw Ben and, and what stood out was, as Carl tells it, the putting stroke. And in Carl's words, it flowed like the wind. Now from the bunker. Yeah, just a little splash out on this par three. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. Second shot, good look at the green. And getting ready for the putt. That hurt. It did. Shot gone forever. Has this one for par. Those keep the round going, those par putts. So they'll tap in. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Frank, the 15th, kind of a fun golf hole, if you can curve your ball. I mean, that's a huge dogleg to the right, isn't it? Yeah, it's much easier if you're a right-hander if you cut it down here. If you don't cut it, then make sure you don't run out down that left side. That was just a beautiful drive. You hit it solid and right in the middle. Now playing the second here at the par four. Into the tall cabbage, that ball is swallowed up. Frank, what are you looking to do with this approach shot here at 15? Anytime the flag's on the front, uh, Rich, it's basically green light special. When the flag starts to get pushed towards that back area of that green, it starts to get narrower and narrower and narrower. And that's where you've got to be a little careful. Patrick Rogers, third shot. Certainly had enough power, just didn't have any touch. Ball sitting down here in the rough, he's digging in.
Well, that's what the great ones do. From the rough, they use their skill and their strength to get it out and get it close. Well, Rich, it's been a disaster until this point, but there's an escape clause. If he can make bogey from here, that'll be some doing, something to be proud of. We'll feel actually pretty good. Sometimes you see players walk off a hole with a little bounce in their step, even after a bogey, because they've had to work hard for it. Patrick Rogers for a double bogey. Ooh, good effort right there. Almost made it. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. Frank, this game will drive you crazy. Yeah, you can do all so many things right, and then just something so simple, completely wrong. Blemish on the scorecard. A bogey. Just a tap in to finish the hole. Then a rocky round. The Bay Hill Club and Lodge features a really exciting finishing stretch. 16 is a reachable par 5. You'll see eagles and birdies there coming home. 17, a very difficult par 3 over the water. The bunker is there. Takes an excellent shot. And then 18 is all you want. We know that with the water in front. That second shot which comes over the lake. And that's a hold your breath moment. It is a great finishing three hole stretch at Bay Hill. Good tee shot right in the short grass. Pays a price for that. Yeah, when you don't see the top of the ball in the rough, you know it's not sitting pretty. Gonna need a bit of force to extract one out of there. And from the fairway for his second shot here. Not looking good, Frank. No, I think it's wet. Frank, sadly, I've been there too often in the water. You get down on yourself. What's the right way to approach this mentally? Well, you've almost got to take a step backwards, Rich. Um, you, you, this can add up so, so quickly. So give yourself a little pat on the back, say it's fine. I mean, you, you're, not, you, 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 you're human. You're allowed to hit bad shots. But the big thing now is to avoid two in a row. After hitting it in the drink, this is the fourth shot. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. Uh, the scorecard is uh, quickly adding up. Headed for the bunker? Oh, a bit unfortunate. Wasn't able to avoid the sand trap. Frank, not where he wants to be, but not out of the hole here at the par five. No, but uh, Rich, to drop a shot here would, uh, would really set him backwards. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. So getting set for a greenside bunker shot, Frank, when I think of the great bunker players in the history of the sport, I think about Gary Player, Seve Ballesteros, whom you knew so well. What did they do that made them so effective on these greenside bunker shots? They had an attitude for a start that was different. For them, it was, they saw possibilities. And uh, they, they would imagine the amount of sand. Remember, because this is the only shot in golf where you don't have to hit the ball first. So they would really choose the amount of sand behind the ball, whether that was an inch or two. Aim the club at that and made sure they followed through. Just a couple of feet. Good confidence stroke. That's what you like to see. Putting for par. Stays at six under. Frank, par 317. Daunting shot. What are you thinking as you step onto this tee? Just make three. Two is a huge bonus. Take three in a heartbeat. In the direction of the sand. Looks like it. 
lucky devil. That was going in the bunker all the way. <laughs> Seems to like it. Headed for the fat part of the green. That will be a great look at birdie. Second shot now on the way for Brant Snedeker. Long pot here. This will require a good touch. Frank, he might like this one. He might like. Oh, he's gonna love it, Frank. Oh yeah, go ahead and fill it up. This one just requires a little bit of focus. Well, thank you at last. A birdie. That was a long time coming, Frank. Yeah, finally he strung some shots together. Now, if all of a sudden he can do the same on the next hole, he might just get a run going. Frank, did you hear the sound of that coming off the club face? It was like a cannon. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball. And this shot he is on the fairway, over 300 yards. Frank, I just love this second shot here at 18. We've seen it so many times. We've seen some great moments, and we've seen some very unfortunate ones as well. It scares the living daylights out of even the best players in the world. Very skinny entry to this uh, crescent-shaped green on the left side. But if you go down the left, there's those two bunkers that, uh, that sort of stop you going too far left. If you go straight at it, there's another bunker towards the right. This is so much about, uh, are you swinging good? Do you have the shot? Now I've got to find out. Now Brandt for his birdie. No doubt about that one. That was struck with confidence. It's that sneaky distance. So a bright spot finally, and now at plus six. So as we finish up here today, Frank, he has not had the best round, but I suppose that's golf, isn't it? Yeah, he's not Robinson Crusoe. This golf course can uh, drive many a man crazy. But the beauty of this game, you get up, dust yourself.